Welcome back to our special report tonight on the facts of how we got here and the pursuit of justice ahead. A nation with the rule of law must apply it fairly. It's no accident that in the Trump era, we've seen an explosion of debates about law and order, about racism and favoritism, about the use of force and state killings. These are long-standing American problems, but they're certainly worse when the state is led by a man bluntly pressing autocratic plots and bigoted schemes. It is also no accident that even before Trump has left the building and lost government power, we're already hearing these calls from his allies for unity and understanding and putting divisive tasks aside. Many of those claims are best understood as criminal defenses and diversions, not a legitimate civic debate. Because the insurrection is a legal and constitutional challenge for the nation to address with justice. It is not a debate between legitimate sides. There's no talk of unity in a murder trial because it's irrelevant to pursuing justice. I mean that literally. A comment about unity would be ruled out of order at trial because the jury must determine what happened. Was it a crime? Not whether a finding of guilt or innocence would impact unity outside the courtroom. And I say justice, not vengeance, because this is the rule of law. In the months and years ahead, the insurrection and riot will be put on trial. There'll be several trials, actually. A second Senate trial for the president, who was acquitted last time with the support of Republican senators. Remember, that trial was also for charges that Donald Trump autocratically and illegally tried to cheat in the same 2020 race, facing the same opponent, now President-elect Biden. And there will be trials for the people who stormed the Capitol and attacked police and plotted to kidnap and kill elected officials, all to keep their autocrat in power. Justice requires they are legally presumed innocent, until proven guilty, and each entitled to due process and an individual assessment of the case. We do not try them in the press. We do not presume their guilt. We must follow the rule of law and justice, affording them a very process and dignity they would deny others. And that justice must come first and be independent from whatever else the nation wants to do in public debate or policy reform or any future elections. We did just have an election, and the people chose to end Trump's presidency, to transfer the Senate out of Republican control. And when the historically Republican state of Georgia witnessed Donald Trump's actions over these months, these last two months, and much of what I just reported to you, when it saw its Republican senators rush to back him at every single turn, it booted both of them for new leaders, knowing that action would also demote Trump enabler Mitch McConnell in favor of a Democratic Senate. Trumpism escalated steadily over these years. But so did a firm rebuttal and rejection of it. And when justice is done, the nation may also want to keep in mind the truth that is the backdrop for everything we just showed you factually tonight. Who stood where? Who bears some responsibility? as people in the future decide whom to choose, as these politicians seek more power from you in the future. Choose wisely. Your life may depend on it. Clearly, the president was making a joke. He loves to bait the press. I think he did it to gig you guys. Patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Let's have trial by combat. We're going to have to fight much harder. I remember guys chanting, like, kill him with his own gun. Welcome back to The Beat. We're joined by former prosecutor John Flannery. Your thoughts on justice uh, in America at this juncture? Uh, my thought is that the Senate 
every senator should have a copy of your presentation tonight to start with as a primer for what we've all seen publicly. In terms of justice, we have to hold accountable our highest and most important elite, elected and otherwise. Otherwise, the farce that we've been perpetuating in recent years that no man is above the law is proven to be false. We have a president who has at every turn going back to the campaign, but especially the first month he took office, he started these Hitler-like rallies. And we saw the combination of ways that he approached them. He would tell them the big lie. He would get them furious. And then he would encourage them to violence, even in the early days, as your piece showed. So it is no surprise that we end up here. But there's something very interesting about Trump as coward. Even as he was saying what's found in the uh, impeachment resolution, if you don't fight like hell, you're not going to have a country anymore. He said he would walk with them to the Capitol. The coward wouldn't do it. Bone spurred Trump would never do that. So inciting people to riot, bringing them to the Capitol, perhaps having uh, conversations with the leadership, encouraging this fight that he knew was illegal, because again, it was the big lie to overturn an election for which the people had very clearly designated Biden as their president. They did it. They, they had 60 cases in court. They counted and recounted the ballots. We had the Electoral College. We had a vice president from his party, his, his associate, who refused to violate the law. And so what did they do? They tried to bring down the Capitol. Those are basic crimes against the republic. And all those people who flew here on the watch list and who uh, mapped out the, uh, the Congress and talked about filling and everything else like that, those are felony murder accusations. Anybody who is in that Capitol might be subject to that. And the president himself right. inciting this offense. And then we have both right. uh, state and, and federal and laws. And I've got yeah. to hand it, I have to hand it to Joy Reid. And people can debate historical comparisons with John Flannery, as you mentioned. The law has to look at the facts of what was done and who fomented violence. I want to thank you. Uh, we end the week with our counselor, Flannery. I want to thank you thank for you. watching. Uh,